In this video, I'm going to demonstrate using Postrans to amend and create stock data within Sage 200. So first of all, we're going to create some new stock items from some existing ones and the location they are in by default. Also, then we're going to extract some stock information and amend it very easily. Of course, Postrans can also be used for creating nominal journals, invoices, purchase orders, uh, managing bill of materials and all sorts of weird and wonderful bits of data within Sage 200. It also has in-cell searching, which you will see demonstrated and validation before pushing any data in. It's available for Sage 50 and 200 and possibly Sage 1 in the future. OK, so let's uh, make some edits to stock items in Sage 200. Let's press uh, help on the post trans toolbars. And here you can see we've got a series of examples. I'm just going to go down and type stock. I'm just going to double click on stock records create. OK, so we all know that uh, Sage 200 is a very complex when it comes to stock. So there are many, many examples. Um, you know, you can import alternate codes, stock supplies, locations, prices, all the rest of it into Sage 200. So What's this template all about? Well, this template here is primarily um, designed to allow you to easily create stock items. So let's just explain. This is a static data template. So basically, Postrans reads the first line of the sheet to denote what is in each column. So we can rearrange that. We can add things, etc. There's a whole video on that. And the data is contained from row five onwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press extract and um, this is already linked to my company. Normally it would come up with a selection list. Now here I can filter down the list of what I want to see in um, my spreadsheet. Now if I press space and tab away, we can do any searching we want. So we could actually just extract all our cooking stock items. So you can see there we've got some cooker hoods, etc. So that's brought them in. Now, Say we want to create a new range, I don't know, a fan-assisted oven. We could bring that down here, and we could now call that fan oven, I don't know, fast. It's an extra hot oven. We can change the description slightly. And we could say, okay, we want to create it in a location, so we're going to create this in our showroom. So this is going to create the showroom location also at the same time as creating the stock item. So I'm going to call the bin uh, SAMO1, and of course I don't actually need to do that, and I can even set the minimum maximum levels for that bin, so we've set that to 5, five and 50, and now if we press import, we should see um, Postrans import that as a new record. So now we have a new stock item, so now if I switch back to Sage 200 and go to the stock control list, um, let's just remember what stock item it was. It was cooker forward slash fan. There we go. There's, there's this new stock record we've created. Um, it's just warning me about my license. Um, so we've created that new stock item very simply. And if we go in, we should see there's the showroom location and We've set up the minimum and maximum quantity, and we've also set a bin code against that stock item. So let's move on to the uh, second example in this workbook. And you can see there's a completely different layout. This one has um, some extra columns in, and it lists a lot of the nominal analysis for each stock item. So if I press extract, I can extract from Sage 200, my stock information. This time I'm actually going to go in and go into the search analysis and I'm going to, for some reason, tick uh, grey, white and beige. Oh, I ticked that before in my example. Let's have washing machines and fridges and I think I'll tick gas and electricity. So now when I press overwrite, we've now pulled all those items out. Now if I go down and I want to edit some nominals, I can just type 311, which is the start of that nominal group code. And you can see there, I've just changed that. Now I can copy that down quite easily. Or I could go in here and I say, well, I can't quite remember, so I'm going to press space, S-A-L. And now let's search for everything with Sal in the description. So we can change that to a bespoke kitchen. And let's 
Oops, copy that down. So you can see here there how easy it is to edit the data and quite complex codes really the nominals but very easily using the power of post trans. Now I'm going to press the import button and uh, it's just going to give me confirmation. Now this confirmation here is telling me what defaults would be applied to any new stock items if that data hasn't already been specified in the spreadsheet. And you can see there it's also got a default of current uh, location is warehouse. So it's going to create automatically warehouse locations. Now this can be set in the system setup so it can be changed to any location. And let's press OK. And you can see there we've updated seven stock items that easily from within Excel. If you're watching this video from YouTube, to go to our website, simply click on the link in the description below. If you're already on our website, you can scroll down slightly and below this video, you'll probably see some related links to associated articles. Let's just show you some of the resources on the website. Switch over, here's the home page. You can see here we have a series of menus at the top and if you allow them to expand, you can see there all the different types of importation or extraction you can use with PostTrans and Sage and also the transactions you can post. But importantly, there's a training section here. If we go to the training section, that describes in detail how to alter a PostTrans template using the tags that we briefly discussed in the demonstration. Also on the website is a blog which you can subscribe to and I thoroughly recommend that so then you can learn of new functionality and uses of PostTrans because each of these articles maybe hones in on a particular function, a particular tag or a particular way of using the product to do a particular um, job. For instance, expanding bill of materials on an order, code searching, protecting templates, importing CSV files, pricing, managing VAT, order currency, you name it, it's all in there. Uh, and that is easily accessible from the software itself. So if I switch back to a template, and this one's an order template, and I've just got the tag window open here on the right. But you'll see as I scroll down, this one here, um, TL description, which is the actual product description, actually has a blog article. So clicking on there takes me to that blog article and explains in great detail the implications of using that tag and the many different options, maybe in system setups, alters and behavior of that tag. So hopefully that will help. Also, we have uh, the help button itself on the button bar, which takes you to kind of a context sensitive help um, and also takes you to the training page, which explains how to manipulate and alter that template. And in addition to all that, of course, we have these blue help buttons here, which are easily accessible. They're also in the setup windows within PostTrans. So again, that takes you to a blog article. For instance, this one's about making the cursor follow a certain path that will then take you to that article and explain how you customize that individual functionality. So there I hope you've seen um, many different functions and um, online resources that we provided you to enable you to customize PostTrans to create a template to uh, help you or your customers. So I uh, thank you very much for watching this video.